So using the hand mic that come with the 91 AD uh, when I purchased it second hand, you've actually got the option of plugging in an external speaker or, or headset possibly on the bottom until using the external mic. Um, so that's what I've actually done at the moment. And it's just an old um, Philips uh, surround sound speaker that I had from an old set. And I just want you to have a listen to the, the quality of the audio uh, that's coming out. That's definitely made an improvement. I'll hand it back to you, Barry, and then I'll, I'll just try and see if I can grip uh, this microphone with uh, my other hand. But I'm not very good at uh, being ambidextrous. Uh, I'm right-handed, so doing things left-handed is a little bit difficult for me. So, uh, back to you, Barry. MM6, BFH, and the large group. Hey Barry, that's because guys can do it better, they can use both hands. But we're talking about keen radio mics here. Over to you Barry. Yes, uh, we could go far with that there Tom, but not in one Charlie. Uh, seeing that as ladies present there and uh, licenses could be ripped up if we go any further there so uh, we'll, we'll avoid that subject there and uh, yes uh, uh, I, nothing like uh, having a fish smoked there and uh, <laughs> the, the kippers, that's another matter, Tom, you know what I mean, and uh, half of people's feet don't smell as bad as kippers, over. Yeah, and the other half of people's feet smells worse than kippers. But Barry, can you do me a favour, because uh, I did take a toilet break. I know 9, four, uh, nine Hotel 4, Charlie Mike, I went to your tea. Problem at all. Go ahead, Christina. Over. Okay, two echo zero. KSH returning. I'm going to make this that absolute final. I've been over to you, Carol. 2E0 CDH from 2E0 KSH 73. Okay, it's the next day, uh, and I've been pretty happy with all the setup that I got done last night. Uh, when I jumped up this morning, and you know, I was watching a couple of videos, etc., uh, and decided to switch the system on. Uh, and before I did that, though, I wanted to actually install the DVAR software, just another node control software that I wanted to check out and see whether it was any better than the, the DV node. Uh, but what actually happened was it, it didn't want to come to life, basically. Um, I was able to turn on, but I wasn't able to give any commands over RF uh, to link up. Uh, so quickly what I did was jump into the test system, which you see here, uh, NW test, and uh, started doing some testing and just, you know, keying up. And it wasn't reading the headers at all. Uh, I wasn't getting any information coming through. Um, so of course the only thing that I'd changed, or at least the only thing I thought I'd changed, was uh, the fact that I'd installed that software, the DVAR software. So ran through all the motions and and uninstalled all that. Uh, did some more tests. Didn't want to work again. Uh, uninstalled all of the DSTAR software that I had on this system, uh, <clears throat> and then just went and reinstalled it bit by bit. Uh, still wasn't working. Tried some different frequencies. Uh, went a bit higher in the frequencies, wondering maybe there was some interference that I was receiving, um, which you would think would be unlikely, being that I'm you know, sitting right under the antenna that I'm broadcasting to or transmitting to. And you know, changed around with a few settings, went back to all the originals, and all of a sudden it's just started working again. So at this point, I'm, I'm uncertain as to what's going on. You can see I'm keying up there, and and the head is coming through fine. And when I key up, you can see that uh, when everything's working correctly, those two top LEDs come on. Uh, the green light has been on, which I'm assuming just signifies power. Um, but what was actually happening, and you can see this one's actually staying on a little bit, uh, what was actually happening was it was seemed to be in normal mode, but uh, this one was coming on temporarily when I was keying up, and then it was just dropping out almost immediately. 
like it wasn't holding the signal or it wasn't receiving the header correctly or something like that um, which was sort of mirroring what I was seeing on the software or the test software uh, here on the PC because uh, what I was seeing was either nothing uh, or it was coming up uh, with a partial read and then stopping and I was having some red characters here rather than the green uh, and all of the information up the top here was just gobbledygook nothing was coming through clear at all um, so look I also switched around tried some different USB ports uh, and the USB seemed to be connecting up okay uh, you know, everything seemed to be alright it seemed to be installing the, the node uh, software okay uh, so at this point through keying up there again everything being successful I'm still unawares as to uh, why that was happening at all. Whether the board itself takes quite a while um, to come online and, and get an internet connection, etc., I don't know. Uh, maybe that was just issue. Maybe I was expecting too much of it too quickly. Uh, but from the time frame that I had it sitting there and, and the numerous bits of different testing that I was doing, I would have thought that uh, it would have had time to connect up. <clears throat> so, what I'm going to have to do at this point is. Um, yeah, just do a bit more testing and, and hope that it uh, continues to work the way it should. Oh, look, I also switched around, tried some different USB ports, uh, and the USB seemed to be connecting up okay. Uh, you know, everything seemed to be alright, it seemed to be installing the, the Node uh, software okay. Uh, so at this point, through keying up there again, everything being successful, I'm still unawares as to uh, why that was happening at all. Whether the board itself takes quite a while um, to come online and, and get an internet connection, etc., I don't know. Uh, maybe that was just issue, maybe I was expecting too much of it too quickly. Uh, but from the time frame that I had it sitting there and, and the numerous bits of different testing that I was doing, I would have thought that uh, it would have had time to connect up. <clears throat> so after that quick test, I've actually gone back to the frequency that I've been using, which is 145.450. Um, and you can see that there and over here um, but watch actually what happens when I key up it's uh, gone back to not wanting to work again so you can see that um, this LED is, seems to be staying on so whether that's suggesting that there's some sort of signal there or something I don't know which was causing havoc um, but if we go back up to so if we go back up to the test uh, which is currently running and we key up we get absolutely nothing so now we're on 145.555 and the same on the radio over here that LED light's gone out, so that kind of looks like standby, which is what it normally looks like. But if I key up now, that all seems to be okay. Uh, and the radio certainly seems to be receiving a signal okay. But I'm not... But I'm still not getting anything on screen when I key up. I'm not sure whether this is a software issue here at this point. Uh, everything else seems to be okay. Um, again, what I'm going to do is unplug it. Plug it into a different USB port. Okay, so this is unusual. Um, what I've done is thought, well, maybe the software, uh, it's actually the test software or something that, that's having some sort of an anomaly. So what I've done is open up DV Node here, and if I key up uh, to attempt the link, Seems to be having a bit of an issue there. It's not. Um, seems to be receiving the command okay down the bottom. What I'm actually going to do is try and connect up manually here. Yeah. It's got the gateway unlinked. It's entirely sure what it's doing here. Gateway unlinked. 
Seems to be re receiving the instruction and interpreting the instruction okay down the bottom. Uh, which you'll see down the bottom here. There it is. Uh, but the error message we're getting at the top there says, uh, hang on, the error message we're getting at the top there says that it's unknown. Um, D plus connection, so. Okay, so the plot thickens. Um, I don't think I originally changed any settings uh, with the DV node software when I originally set it up. Uh, but as you saw a little bit earlier, it was coming up and when I was trying to key up via RF or even connect uh, just using the software here, um, it was actually saying that the, you know, not recognizing uh, the gateways, etc. Um, so what I actually did was clicked on the gateway, uh, sorry, clicked on the tools option up the top here. Uh, options and then one of the options there is um, it says call sign server and it was set up uh, for whatever the default one was uh, the Dutch star DPNS up the top um, so I just dropped down and went to the AA4RC call sign server down the bottom because what I was seeing was uh, when I was trying to select the gateway Sorry, so what you can actually do with the software down the bottom is manually connect. So you can select the gateway option down the bottom here. And then you get a drop down list uh, and you can literally just scroll through all the different gateways um, that you want to connect to. Uh, went to go to reflector one, it wasn't on the list. There was maybe half a dozen, if that, reflectors showing on the list. Uh, so what I did, like I said, was went over and changed um, that option via tools up the top here. Uh, and pick the AA4RC option uh, and then closed it. Um, when you make some changes, it says that you've got to restart the software uh, to get it to work. Uh, and lo and behold, I did that. And if we choose reflector one here um, and just go connect down the bottom, uh, you'll see we're connected. But back to the river thing is, I first started working out in Florida, and we had, and I, I call it kind of river wars, of, you know, Georgia and Alabama, you know, we're like, back and we're connected, ah, so we're not entirely sure what's going on there at this point. Um, the test below, software, it would certainly below. appear that the but test software doesn't seem to be watches. functioning correctly. I will hook this all back up to the laptop and test the laptop just to try a different PC. Yeah, probably uh, if you look at the whole length of the obviously to rule a few things out. Uh, but the board seems to be working and transmitting and, and we're back on the original 145.450. So not certain what was going on there. And what I'm going to do is just or send off a link command via RF and you will see that it's working. Not a problem. Close down DV node here and go back to the test software. Go back to our simplex frequency and just run a quick read test again. And there we go. So everything seems to be working okay again. So not real sure what's going on here. Uh, if anybody's ever done any testing of any sort of thing, the worst thing to try and track down is an intermittent issue. Uh, so I'm hoping we're not going to face something like that. That's just going to uh, ship me to tears. Uh, but anyway, at this point she seems to be back up and functional because what I wanted to do today was do some distance testing. I did some quick testing last night uh, at low power uh, and was only able to get about a kilometre away. So that was about 5 watts um, and I would have had less than that on the handheld. Uh, but I was just listening to the receive and I was only about to get you know, about a kilometre away. Um, but that was with the handheld and sitting in the car. So th I guess that was more of a test of the receive capability of the antenna on, on the HT more than anything else. So we're going to bump the power up a little bit today. Uh, going to go mid power, uh, which I think is around about 15 watts on the Kenwood, give or take. And uh, just going to do it, take a drive and see how far away I can get uh, while synced up and uh, see if I can actually get in and issue some RF commands. So I'll take the camera with me and uh, show you some of those results.